What up, Star Squad? Amoki is here, and today we are either going to gush or crush over a game we beat a few weeks ago on stream called RFL, not to be confused with Eichenfell. So this is a game available on Steam currently, at the time of this recording, for a solid 15 bucks. I got it on sale for about 7 but honestly, it's worth every cent and more. Here's your courtesy spoiler warning if you want to play the game for yourself. As a rule of thumb, I am going to try my best not to spoil too much of the story, but some spoiling is very necessary. On to the game! This game was developed by... Stegosoft Games and produced by... Dangin Entertainment. I apologize if I pronounced any of your names wrong. I left you. Mwah. <laughs> Anywho, first off, let's talk about the beautiful fucking design of this game. The very first thing that attracted me was honestly the graphics. I was immediately brought back to classic Legend of Zelda, Final Fantasy, hell, even Secret of Mana or Chrono Trigger. The turn-based style of fighting really hit me with a punch of nostalgia, and this game was an instant classic for me. As far as RPGs go, this one I can say was very well paced. As with story and grinding, all accounting, I logged in about a solid 33 hours into the game, both on and off stream. Mostly had to do the grinding off stream, though. They had multiple modes, so if the grinding was just a little too much for you, you could do the very easy story mode, where you focus solely on completing the story. Or if you want a more of a challenge because you're a sweaty JRPG player, you could definitely switch to hardcore mode. The story was not only well laid out, but was explained flawlessly where there wasn't any gray area or questions left unanswered. It was also explored in such a way to honestly, it caught me off guard a lot of the times, and I always love a game that can blindside me. Something is wrong. No! 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 Not no! Their cast and crew were also very diverse. I loved the relationships between each of the characters in the Motley crew, and they all really meshed well together. Oftentimes, I felt myself connecting with some of the members, their goals and aspirations, and for others, well, let's just say both my chat and I may or may not have lost our shit a few times. Well, it took you long enough. I was wondering if you'd ever figure it out. Me and Turban Boy over here used to go out. Oh my god! <laughs> Bro, Dorian, how many times have you stuck your spoon in the mixing bowl? Bro? If I had a few critiques, it would definitely be them side quests. Honestly, them side quests gave me the fucking blues. Eventually, I had to give in and look to see if others online were having the same problems or if I was just a big dummy by myself. It turns out, we're all big dummies. <laughs> I felt the descriptors for each quest could have offered a little more insight as to where the fuck I was supposed to go. A small critique as well, some quests had symbols, and I had no idea that those symbols apparently meant that they were different types of quests, separating the class quests from the main quest line. The lack of musical change was also very confusing at first. Usually when entering any battle, there's usually a change in music letting you know, hey, we fightin'. But in RFL, only the bosses got musical numbers. Not gonna lie though, some of them were bangers. But I remember this music's a bop. Now, despite the fact the ending didn't go the way I imagined, or even wanted for that matter, it wasn't all for not. Despite my mental collapse, the ending was oddly satisfying and tied into the central theme of the game. That theme being hope. You see, hope seemed to be the driving factor that was pushing each and every character to fight to the bitter end. They had hopes for saving everyone, hopes for a brighter future, hopes in rekindling old flames and fixing past mistakes, hope of starting lives with those they care about and love, and finally hope that there is something more beyond this quiet little life on the floating island. Honestly, at the end of the game, Aura fell, but that was necessary for everyone to progress and grow and for the old to be replaced with the new. Despite my grievances with this game, it is ultimately a gush for me. You can tell a lot of care and planning went into making this amazing game, and I'm actually super excited that I got a chance to purchase and play this game. I hope you guys will take the time to show your support in giving the game a try on your own time and experiencing this amazing adventure in your own special way. If you guys like what you saw here, I hope you leave a like, subscribe, maybe even leave a comment. Tell me if you guys have played the game. Tell me if you haven't played the game. Even tell me if this review maybe enticed you to play the game on your own. 
Don't forget to follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with any and all streaming and YouTube updates. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch where the Star Squad and I go on loads of adventures together. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok as well for this same energy year-round. Until next time, stay awesome! <laughs>